Welcome to the On My Workbench channel. In this video I will be talking about why we decided to rebuild our grow boxes. Unless you have been living on another planet, you've probably read the newspaper headlines and seen TV news reports regarding possible food shortages. Farmers are having to let their crops rot in the fields due to the lack of demand as most restaurants are closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Major meat producers are predicting possible shortages of chicken, pork, and beef due to what is referred to as the depopulation of livestock. The term depopulation is a softer way of saying the killing of chicken, pigs, and cows due to little or no demand for the meat, again because most restaurants are closed. I have seen reports of pig farmers talking about having to kill piglets as soon as they are weaned from their mothers. This is because there is no value for the piglets and they cost money to keep and feed. The same goes for chicken and beef farmers. If you can't sell your chickens, pigs, and cows, they still cost money to keep them. Dairies are dumping thousands of gallons of milk a day. This is due to cows having to be milked two to three times every day. If they go more than one or two days without giving a normal volume of milk, they are likely to become ill and can develop a condition known as mastitis, an inflammation and infection of the udder. Normally a dairy farm will milk their cows on a regular schedule for around 305 days. This creates a problem for dairies as cows have to be milked and milking costs money. With little to no demand for the milk and with no way to store the milk, it has to be disposed of. It's the same for the dairy farmers as it is for chicken, pig, and cattle farmers. They are spending a lot of money with no hope of a return and it just can't go on forever. The U.S. food supply chain has to constantly be resupplied with food. If the meat and vegetables that are supposed to be entering the food supply chain today are not, then at some point the food supply will run low or could completely run out. The food supply chain uses a system that can be described as FIFO, first in, first out. It's my understanding that it takes around four to five months for the food such as vegetables to be planted, grown, harvested, transported, processed, canned, and delivered to the store. The average length of a growing season varies from location to location. Most crops require a growing season of around 90 to 100 days. That's three months out of the four to five months just to grow the vegetables. If the food that is being grown today is plowed under and does not make it into the food chain, then at some point there has to be a shortage. And any time there's a shortage of anything, its price will go up. And you can be sure if there's a bad enough food shortage that the price of food will go out of sight. How bad that food shortage could be depends on how much of our food is plowed under and wasted. This is why we think there could soon be a major food shortage. We built our old grow boxes out of salvage pressure treat lumber from an old porch deck that was given to us for dismantling and hauling it off. There was not quite enough of the salvaged lumber to build the four grow boxes, so we had to buy some new lumber as well. The old boxes worked well, but over time the elements were taking its toll on the boxes, and the old boxes were starting to sag and lean a bit, so we decided to build four new ones, utilizing the old 4x4 four four legs and just filling in between the legs with new 6x6 six six and 2x4 pressure treated lumber. When we built the old grow boxes we had used chicken wire and grow cloth over a 2x4 frame to support the soil in the grow boxes. So the first thing we had to do was remove the 2x4 frame that was supporting the soil. This was done by cutting the 2x4s on one side of the grow box and letting that side drop down a bit and then cutting the 2x4s on the other side, then going back to the first side and cutting all the chicken wire on that side and both ends of the grow box. This way the first side of the support structure was free to fall to the ground while the other side was still attached to the grow box by the chicken wire. Once we had the first side resting on the ground, we moved the soil from the upper side to the lower side to gain access to the chicken wire that was still attached to the upper side. We then cut the chicken wire and let the soil and the frame fall to the ground. We then remove the chicken wire, grow cloth, and the 2x4 frame. While it sounds easy, it was not. We bought all new pressure treated lumber from Lowe's. This is just one of the three trailer loads of lumber that we bought. In this photo you can see all the new lumber in one stack. We used six 10 foot 2x6's for the sides and six 4 foot 2x6's for the ends. 
we trued up the 4 by 4 post as best we could and used 3.5 inch number 10 deck screws to fasten the 2x6s to the 4x4s. Checking the 4x4s each time we attached a new 2x6. We did the same for each end of the box and the back. Once we had the procedure worked out on the first box, we did the old rinse and repeat for the remaining three. With our old boxes, we only had the edges of 2x6 sticking up above the surface of the soil. So anytime we were working in one of the boxes and we had to set a tool down, we had to try and balance the tool on the edge of the 2x6 or lay it in the soil. So this time we decided to use 2x4s attached flat to the top edge of the 2x6s as a shelf to set the tools and stuff on while working in the grow boxes. Once the grow boxes were finished, we lined the boxes with tarps from Harbor Freight to help protect the lumber from the soil and moisture. In the following photos and video, you can see the mostly finished grow boxes with a corner trim and a center 2x4s that are used to help keep all of the 2x6s in line, and Jake the Wonder Wiener Dog guarding his new grow boxes. Please check back with the On My Workbench channel for more videos on cool stuff. Please subscribe, like, comment, share, and click the little bell. And thanks for watching the On My Workbench channel.